By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it even to the foundation. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Do you know what it means? Given those two choices, yes. In the best of all possible worlds, they would just leave us in peace. But they won't. I don't enjoy killing, but when done righteously, it's just a chore, like any other. Practiced hands make for short work. And the good Lord knows there's much to be done here. Happy are those who do the work of the Lord. Zion belongs to God and the people of God. It is a natural temple and monument to his glory. When our Lord entered the temple and found it polluted by money changers and beasts, did he ask them to leave? Did he cry? Did he simply walk away? No. He drove them out. It is one thing to forgive a slap across my cheek, but an insult to the Lord requires... No. It demands correction. I and the dead horses are prepared to do what must be done to protect Zion from the White Lakes. And though Daniel won't accept it yet, there are many sorrows who are also prepared. They may not be warriors, but this is their home. If you have a chance to speak with Daniel about this, ask him to consider defending Zion instead of abandoning it. He has good intentions, but I fear that if we evacuate the sorrows from this place, it will be lost to them and us forever. Welcome back. What can I do for you? I thought he might. It's been some time since I've visited civilized places. I don't have fond memories of them. But I have always seen these places from the outside. I'd rather not influence him more than I already do. Why don't you talk to him? Follows Chalk needs more guidance in his life, just not from me. He's a butcher. Believe me, I know the godless fire that burns in his heart. I've been burned by it myself. He's not the kind to let his subordinates do all the killing. No, he likes to have a hand in it, with that spear of his. He's fashioned himself an abomination before the eyes of the Lord. I'm happy to serve as an instrument of divine justice. It's not something I enjoy, but I pray to God that someone may learn from my mistakes. What would you like to know? You are kind to offer, but no, there's nothing you can do. We don't use chems, but I learned long ago that I'm immune to their effects. It never stops burning, my skin. Every day I have to unwind the bandages and replace them with fresh ones. Exposing my body to the air is like living through it again. But it's better to be clean than comfortable. I was born in Ogden, what people came to call New Canaan. Things were more peaceful when I was growing up. When I was a young man, I went out into the world to do missionary work, as all new Canaanites do. I traveled along the Long 15 and followed 89 South into Arizona. Along the way, I met two men from a group called the Followers of the Apocalypse. Edward Sallow and Bill Calhoun. They came to teach the tribes. Calhoun was a good man. 
Edward was the one who got us into trouble down the road. No, not then. Back then he was just Edward. Smart man. Young, but we all were. We thought we could hike into the Grand Canyon and talk to Blackfoots. We did. And the Blackfoots were friendly enough at first. But eventually... I've thought back to that day so many times. I must have mistranslated. Something must have been mixed up, because the Blackfoots decided we weren't going to leave. The rest is history, assuming Edward hasn't changed it. This way lies the path to hell. Ed... Caesar needed me to translate. Translation became giving orders. Giving orders became leading in battle. Leading in battle became training, punishing, terrorizing. A series of small mistakes before a great fall. And I stayed in that darkness until after Hoover Dam. After I failed Caesar and he had me burned alive, thrown into the Grand Canyon. I survived because the fire inside burned brighter than the fire around me. I fell down into that dark chasm. But the flame burned on and on. The next morning, I woke up and crawled out of the northern edge of the Grand Canyon, that cursed place. It took me three months to reach New Canaan. It was as though the prodigal son had returned. They welcomed me like I had never left. Never done anything to shame them. The fire that had kept me alive was love. Their love. God's love. I will never be able to repay the debt I owe to them. But I must try. I try not to involve myself with matters of the Mojave anymore. All I know is from before the Battle of Hoover Dam. Better than Caesar, but that's not a high standard. Too much love of money and ownership. Not enough love of God and giving. Any society that derives its power and authority from the will of man alone lives apart from God and will crumble in the end. I had heard of him, but when we were preparing to enter the Mojave, he didn't seem relevant to what was happening. From what I've learned since Hoover Dam, he handled the Mojave tribes in a fashion not entirely dissimilar from Caesar. It's too bad. Love the sinner, hate the sin. With Caesar, it's often very difficult to see through all of that sin to the person inside. I can say that we were both lucky that NCR's supply lines and land routes north of Mojave Outpost were destroyed before the Battle of Hoover Dam. Something bad happened near Death Valley at a place called the Divide. NCR couldn't cut across anymore, and it slowed down the reinforcements. Terrible storms ripped entire companies apart before they even got to Nevada soil. The aftermath of Hoover Dam could have been even worse for Caesar. I don't know for certain, and I don't think NCR knows either. Whatever happened at the Divide was too much for them to handle. Our frumentarii told us what they saw. Only fools and madmen would march into a place like that. All roads wind down to the same spot. The grave. They said all that's left there is a gaping wound cut into the earth. Cursed and damned. No place for God-fearing folk. Not all of them, but they couldn't take 127 North to get around the mountains. As if Death Valley weren't enough, they had the Divide and Big Empty to deal with. From what the Legion's explorers reported, the Big Empty may as well have been a wall to any living thing approaching it. <laughs> 